Well then, first of all, you're a snowboarder. Tell us how you get into snowboarding. Well, uh, I, I started off by going to my local golf course actually in the winter time when there was snow and I, I used to go sledging there all the time and I remember seeing uh, all these snowboarders at the side building this jump and I, uh, I started off by kind of standing up on my sledge and that's how things kind of got, got kind of started and my mum eventually she booked us a family lesson up here in Glenshee. What was it that, that hooked you on snowboarding? I think it was just the the constant strive for like perfection because it's a sport that's kind of like golf. I mean, you can't perfect golf. Um, and in snowboarding, it's just like so hard to achieve new um, things and tricks and just get to a level where you're happy with it. You can't quite get there. You're constantly chasing it. So you mentioned perfection. What is it that you have to do to, to get that perfection in your sport? Well, I, I do the half pipe, which is uh, one of the disciplines in snowboarding, um, and that just requires staying on your feet, uh, executing different variation of spins and tricks, um, and the, the whole kind of side to it is to try and stay um, as clean as possible, um, go as high as you can, um, and just just stay on your feet without fumbling about, uh, and just try to impress the judges as much as we can. How do you actually even start to attempt one of these tricks? They look very dangerous. Yeah, I mean, snowboarding is getting more dangerous as we're, we're having to like push our sport and go into the kind of unknown, going up to the mountain and just having to try a, a new trick for the first time. It's, uh, it's really scary. I mean, uh, you've got to do a lot of visualization and, and study what you're about to do and just make sure that that first attempt is as safe as possible. And you've, you've had a, what kind of injuries have you had? You had quite a bad one, didn't you, yourself? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, my, my worst injury has been dislocating my knee, uh, my kneecap um, has, has been kind of stabilised. And I mean, thankfully, Sports Scotland have been there for me to, to kind of keep me on my feet and keep my career kind of going. How serious was that injury? Well, yeah, I, I had to make the kind of decision to, to go and get it inspected and, and when I did they said that it definitely needs stabilising um, and they ended up going in putting in some yeah. wires to, to put it all together and, and just kind of allow me to, to go back out into the mountains and, and put my knee through its paces again. What happens, you, you get up in the morning, you go straight to the, to the slopes, is that, is that all you do? Yeah, I mean a typical day would Probably until getting up first thing in the morning, um, have a breakfast, half a sleep, and, and just let ourselves waken up a little bit. Um, and then just all pile into the car and just head up to the mountain. And obviously, weather depending, uh, we decide what we're going to do uh, that day. If the day's a, a bluebird's sunny day, then we uh, will, yeah, we'll just get to it and get to work and, and try and progress as fast as we can. Where do you spend your time? Um, at home, I spend my time, I almost live in the gym. Um, I'm up at, in, in Aberdeen and, and I do a lot of my kind of dry land training there and just make sure that I'm strong and fit for when I do go away. Um, we're mostly based out in Colorado, uh, in, in America, all sorts. Um, we travel all over the, the, their country, so we're just in, in search of like the perfect facilities for us um, to help us. You were in Vancouver, that was your first Winter Olympics uh, in 2010. Um, will that experience help you this time around? Um, certainly, I think the experience in Vancouver um, will be a massive help for me. Uh, my teammates are all asking me questions, they're all like, what's it going to be like? Um, what, what are we to expect? And I mean, it, it's hard to describe to them what it's like because it, it is like an event like no other. Um, it, it's the pinnacle of, of most sports. Well, it's been a lifelong ambition. I remember the first time when I started snowboarding, watching Salt Lake City uh, games, and I saw the halfpipe event, and I just thought then that's what I want to do. I know that when you're at the Olympics, you can't help but notice that there's big TV screens everywhere, there's cameramen everywhere, and there's a big crowd there. So um, you've got to learn to adjust to, to that kind of environment. And you have a special tune, am I wrong? Yeah, well, I, I, have a, I have a song that I do listen to before I drop in and uh, Van Halen, Panama, uh, one of my favourites that, I mean, I, I heard it when my dad used to play it in the car when I was a little kid. Um, 
I picked it up from that. I mean, he's a massive kind of Dire Straits fan, so I, I love Dire Straits as well. But yeah, music definitely helps. And um, we we'll go back to your training a little. You had a, a bit of an unusual set of training partners for a while, didn't you? Tell us about the cage fighting. <laughs> well, my dad's. Uh, He's done quite a lot of, of stuff with cage fighters and he, he used to fight himself. So, I mean, I, I just thought, he, he just, just suggested for me to come along one day and I went along to one of their training sessions and, and I, I loved it. I mean, I, I was almost throwing up, but <laughs> it was great fitness and it, it's a different kind of fitness. It, it toughens you up and I think in snowboarding, when you take a fall, you need to be tough. Um, so that sort of training, it's, it's perfect, I think. Snowboarding is it's kind of young hip sport, but your yeah. gran's right into it, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I've been sat down with my gran and I've chatted for hours with her, tr trying to explain everything. And she's so like knowledgeable on snowboarding now so that she knows she knows my half pipe run better than I do. So uh, she's uh, she's really funny. I, I really get along like really well with her, and she's she's inspiring almost. She she always asks me if I've learned anything new when I come home and. I'm always on the phone to her, so. How old is she? Uh, she, it, she must be in her late 80s now, wow, I think. So, wow. yeah, wow. She's, she's awesome. <laughs> I thought the first thing you'd want to do after a season in the snow is go somewhere warm. Yeah, I know, like, holidays do feel appealing, but um, I think, I don't know, I feel like in the peak of, peak of winter, every winter, I've just been non-stop snowboarding from November all the way through to kind of April, so I, I guess, I planned up until the Olympics and then after that there's not much going on but um, yeah I just I think that I'm best to just get back out on snow and just just keep snowboarding. Ben you're clearly very dedicated to your sport and I wish you all the best yeah, thank in you Sochi. So much. Not at all, not at all.